Good morning. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for uh, this invitation. I'm honored to be here. Always exciting to be in India, uh, my motherland. And uh, I'm from Hyderabad originally. Uh, now I'm in Tulane, for those of you who don't know, Tulane School of Medicine in New Orleans. Um, here are my financial disclosures, nothing relevant to this talk. I've never been a consultant to any anything that I'm going to talk here, uh, grant support. So let's move on to the real meat of the talk. Uh, the Schlem's Canal, uh, which is described by Friedrich Schlem way back in 1850s uh, when he was an anatomy professor in Berlin, is an endothelium-lined aqueous conducting channel lying circumferentially parallel to and contiguous with the outer wall of the Tumrikov network. So there's a lot of research and interest in glaucoma world um, um, at targeting the Schlem's Canal, and uh, that's the meat of the talk today. Now, this is not a continuous uh, canal. It's uh, broken into into separate uh, segments by numerous septae, and the canal drains the fluid aqueous into collector channels via the collector channels into the uh, scleral venous pathways. If you look at uh, the actual anatomy on electron microscopy, you will see that the uh, aqueous um, uh, gets across the tribunal meshwork into the canal, and from there, you can see the, um, the pathway leading to the collector channel on the right-hand side. Um, the juxta canalicular complex with the, along with the inner wall of the endothelium is the primary site of resistance. So if you want to do canal-based surgeries, this is what you, to, you, you have to bypass. So the juxta canalicular complex is the main issue that we deal with in glaucoma. If you have to divert the aqueous and bypass this JXT, uh, juxtacolonical complex, you can either do it by ab, and, ab internal approach, that's uh, from within the eye, within the angle structures, or approach the canal from ab external, i.e. Uh, by cutting into the sclera and, uh, and uh, access the canal that way. Remember one thing, the resistance to the aqueous outflow, 60 to 70 percent is by the pre tissue, uh, the trivicular meshwork and the juxta canalicular pathway, uh, and approximately 35 to 40 percent is by the post canalicular uh, pathways. Um, and so, canal based surgeries cannot give you pressures lower than uh, 15 millimeters of mercury. So, if you have a patient with advanced glaucoma that needs pressures of 10, this probably is not the surgical technique that you want to uh, use. That's something to remember. So, why canal surgery? I think it's much more physiologic in nature and restores natural drainage pathway. And apart from that, it's the outstanding safety. Um, none of these canal surgeries are associated with any blebs or bleb-related uh, pathology. There are no issues of choroidal effusions or choroidal hemorrhage that frequently torment uh, the glaucoma surgeon. Um, no hypotonia or hypotonia maculopathy. Vision recovery is similar to cataract surgery with eye stent and trabectome. So for the first time, in the glaucoma world, we have certain surgical techniques and tools that restore the vision similar to cataract surgery or refractive surgery. That's the exciting news. And the safety of this, uh, the safety profile of these surgical techniques is excellent, similar to that of a cataract or refractive surgery. The three common uh, canal surgeries that I have experience with and uh, that are FDA approved and been doing for the last few years include the eye stent, the trabectome, and the canalplasty. I'll briefly go through them so you can understand the techniques behind it. Here is uh, how the um, here is how the canal surgery is done. I mean, this is the trabectome. It comes on a on a on a BSL stand, and the handpiece uh, with aspiration port and an electro surgical ablation unit attached to it, and the foot pedal. And uh, the idea here is uh, to do a clear cornea temporal incision. And uh, uh, re uh, vi visualize the angle using the gonio lens and uh, using the 90 degree bent tip of the trabectome, you access the trabecular meshwork and strip the trabecular meshwork, ablating the edges at the same time. And by doing so, what you're going to do is to open the Schlem's canal directly into the anterior chamber so the aqueous can access the collector channels directly. It's, uh, you open up approximately four to six clock hours. It's pretty atraumatic. It takes you less than five to seven minutes if done properly. Uh, once you master the technique and uh, you wash out the uh, anterior chamber of the aqueous and seal the wound with a single tenon nylon suture and you're done. Um, now let's look at the safety profile of the trabectome surgeries. This, uh, this, uh, this actually is a company um, 
illustrated uh, uh, results, approximately 300 patients, and you see that uh, the peak pressure was 25, and over a period of 40 months of follow-up, the pressure remained at around 15 millimeters of mercury. And similarly, the number of medications dropped from 2.5 to approximately 1 at the end of 40 months of follow-up. If you look at recent studies on trabectome outcomes, you can see 600, by the trabectome study group recently published in BJO, 671 patients with one year follow up, 42% IOP reduction uh, in the trabectome group from 27 to 15, and 24% uh, in the phaco trabectome group from 20 to 15. And it doesn't it didn't make any difference whether these patients had narrow angles or open angles. Uh, and they also concluded the safety profile to be excellent. None of these patients had any glaucoma surgery related complications. Similarly, there's a two year follow up study that's uh, recently published in the Graphis or uh, Clinical Experimental Ophthalmology. Uh, in 2013, close to 600 eyes, 261 with primary open angle glaucomas with a pre op IOP of 24.5 uh, on 2.1 medications. And you can see on the last follow up, intraocular pressure stabilized around 18.5 on 1.2 medications. Similarly, those with pseudo exfoliation, excellent results, excellent safety profile, again, complications or pretty close to zero. Very close, similar to doing a cataract surgery. Now, the next canal surgery that we're going to discuss is the trabecular micro bypass stent. Uh, the eye stent is the smallest medical device known to be implanted in the human body. It measures approximately one millimeter um, in length and height of about 0 0.3 millimeters. And the way the eye stent is is situated, it comes on a plunger similar to that of the express shunt, and you make a similar step like the trabectome, a clear cornea temporal incision, fill the chamber with viscoelastic, and under gonio view, introduce the stent and uh, introduce the stent into the trabecular meshwork at approximately 30 degrees angle. Once it gets into the canal, you gently large and then press the button to release it. So the snorkel is visible through the anterior chamber. It's a pretty simple technique when the learning curve is kind of steep, but once you master it, it takes you anywhere from five to six minutes to do the procedure. It can be done in combination with cataract surgery or as a standalone. And it's a great technique for mild, moderate glaucoma patients. Now let's look at some of the publications on eye stent procedures, so the studies that were done for the FDA trial purposes in the US to the, in 2011 and 2012. Um, they have uh, concluded that the eye stent is efficacious, um, uh, statistically significant less decrease in the, uh, in the number of medications that these patients are on, and superb safety. Over and over again, every single paper on any of these canal based surgeries come to the same conclusion. Safety compared to our usual glaucoma surgeries like the trabeculectomies and glaucoma drainage devices. Um, if you look at the meat of the paper, you can see that the primary endpoint of uh, decreasing the intraocular pressure less than 21 millimeters of mercury was achieved in 72% of the patients with the FACO eye stent compared to 50% in the FACO, canal, FACO alone. And uh, the secondary endpoint of 20% reduction without medications is achieved in 66% of the patients with uh, FACO eye stent as opposed to 48% in uh, cataract surgery alone showing you um, that the eye stent does work, diverting the fluid into the canal. There is a two-year study out recently uh, that concluded patients with combined single trabecular micro bypass stent and cataract surgery had significantly better intraocular pressure control and no medications through 24 months than patients having cataract surgery alone. Both groups had a similar favorable long-term safety profile, meaning that the FACO eye stent group, the glaucoma surgery, had the same safety as that of the, uh, the, the cataract surgery. Now, is there a role for two eye stents? There is a recent paper that came out of Europe suggesting that the intraocular pressure drops down to approximately 15 millimeters of mercury if you insert two eye stents as compared to one eye stent. And uh, the, more recently, there's another paper coming, comparing two eye stents versus two medications. Uh, 200 patients approximately uh, randomized to surgery with two eye stents versus medical group with latanoprost and timolol combination and one year follow up. And they showed uh, similar results, approximately 94% in the eye stent group and 91% in the medication group experienced more than 20% 
IOP reduction from baseline on no, medica on no additional medications. And uh, you can see that the comparable reduction in the intraocular pressure, 8 millimeters with eye stent versus 7 millimeters with the glaucoma, with the glaucoma medications. And excellent sa safety profile in the eye stent group comparable to that of the medications. Now the third and the more uh, involved surgery is the canal canalplasty, which uh, requires viscodilation of the, the canal 360 degrees using a 200 micron microcatheter. It works by reducing the resistance to the outflow pathway, and it's much more physiologic in nature than trabeculectomy. Let me show you a, a sample video of how this works. The initial steps are the same as a, performing a trabeculectomy, where you have an outer scleral flap, followed by a 4 millimeter by 4 millimeter inner scleral flap at 95% depth. During this dissection, which is what you're seeing now, you uh, you dedupe the Schlem's canal and uh, carry the, uh, the dissection to click on here to create a decimate window. And you can see the canal nicely delineated at this stage now. Visco dilate the canal followed by the um, rest of the canal dilation using a microcatheter that goes in 360 degrees. And this followed by placing a tenoproline stent to keep the, the dilated canal and the trabecular meshwork stretched. And you can see clearly on the picture on the left hand side is the pre-op canal um, and the same patient after the surgery, the canal is being stretched to approximately 350 microns. And this you can visualize in almost 90% of the patients. Um, the canal is nice and stretched and uh, I have patients I've performed seven years ago and they still have a dilated canal with pressures in, in the range of 15 to 18 millimeters of mercury. Um, so if you look at the studies published on canoplasty, one in three year studies that are done for FDA purposes, you can see the mean intraocular pressure drop down to approximately 15.3 plus or minus 3 um, on one or uh, less medications compared to 24.7 before the surgery. Um, studies that uh, we published from our own group uh, comparing canoplasty with trabeculectomy, we had similar results, at least in my hands. 13.8 uh, millimeters in the canal group compared to 12 millimeters with the trabeculectomy group. And uh, this is another study from my own group uh, uh, comparing phaco canoplasty with phaco trabeculectomy, one year follow up, again similar results 14 millimeters of mercury in the phaco canal versus 12.2 um, millimeters in the trabeculectomy group. I, and lastly, here's a 24 month follow up on canoplasty and trabeculectomy. You can see the results are pretty similar 14 versus 12.2. So the canoplasty a little bit more involved, but is not associated with any blub, and as such, you have uh, the uh, luxury of creating a surgical result that is comparable to trabeculectomy in vast majority of the patients, but minus the complications associated with trabeculectomy. In all these years and uh, hundreds of canoplasty procedures that are performed, never had a patient with the coral effusions, never had a patient with uh, super coral hemorrhage, never had a patient with hypotony maculopathy. And because there is no blub, you don't see blub-related endophthalmitis in those patients. So a great technique for, um, for you to master, I think. Now, if you compare, if you look at as to where this fits into your practice, globally, the incidence of glaucoma is increasing as an aging population. 80 million population, 80 million people worldwide or, afflict, or will be afflicted with glaucoma by 2020. And if you look at your cataract surgery population alone, approximately 20% have the comorbidity with the glaucoma. And uh, if you look at the safety profile, look at the TBT study, approximately 30% of the, the, the TRAB versus uh, either the trabeculectomy group or the, the tube group had complications, both early and late complications and failure rate. 30 to 40% of the patients experienced it by, by the fifth year. As opposed to the Iceland study, overall safety is comparable to just the cataract surgery. We never had in the entire history of glaucoma surgeries in the last 100 years, surgical techniques that have the safety profile of these canal-based surgeries. And so glaucoma management in 2015, um, you have the drugs and SLT for mild, um, uh, glaucoma, mild glaucomas, 
you have uh, mild to moderate glaucomas when especially they have the comorbidity of cataracts and you're doing cataract surgery anyway, it's a great technique for you to do either the trevectome or diastent to get rid of their glaucoma medications and control the pressure better. And as you know, in all probability, if they control the pressure in the early stages, the resistance is not increased and maybe they will never progress in the future. And so you're cutting the, the disease process early in the stage. And then, of course, severe cases, canoplasty, trabeculectomies, and uh, tubes will be there for you. So what have we learned so far? Surgical techniques of these canal surgeries have been perfected in the last few years. Results are proven, at least in the short term, one to three years. Safety established beyond question. I mean, paper after paper in my own surgical experience suggests that this canal based surgery is extremely safe, as safe as a refractive surgery or a cataract surgery. And what do we need to learn? We don't know yet the long-term um, uh, efficacy of these uh, patients. So with that, I conclude my talk. Thank you for the invitation.